Billy. Yeah. We're at it again. Another another go round, man. I feel amazing. I know. I feel amazing too, brother. Our guest is amazing. Oh man. Our set is amazing. We are amazing. But before I go any further. You can't go no further. Stop where you stop where you Stop! Ernest! Yo. Samo! What up? We need you, brothers. Damn. This locomotive cannot function without you two. Ernest, you're still Ernest, but you're big money. Stop. You are big money. Hey, man, that's what, that's what people have been calling you. I'm going to start cutting it out. The, the, oh, good, luck. Oh. good luck. See, see? Good luck. See, see, put, see, I'm dropping that see, bitch all through it. See, yeah, we'll be right see, back on the Did you miss me? Big, big Money, money e. podcast. <laughs> I'm going to make sure it gets stuck in there. Nah, it's, that's it. Hey, bro. It's Big Money Hey, e. man, listen. Marcus, you remember your first big check? You remember your first big check? I chopped all them checks down. I don't know no big ones. But you remember when you that feeling of that first one. Yeah. Just, yeah, just that's all we had. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Billy, you remember that big one? Oh, I remember the big one. You remember y'all was pitter pattering that night before because you knew it was going in. Oh man, when that first one come in, woo boy! For the last three episodes, Big Money E, Hart has been pitter pattering. Except money is in. You know why, right? He got money. Yeah. The man's got money. When I tell you, he got his own money. <laughs> he got his own money. He got his own money. You understand me? Listen, some of y'all get raises. Here's the deal. Not only did he get raised, but then he's still just doing E thing. He's just facilitating. He's a facilitator. He, listen, he's sitting back in the cut smooth E's. I like smooth E too. Smooth E good. I like smooth E too. It's, it's smooth E and big money E. But big money E has got the goddamn reins. Like it. No money E is a goddamn bull in a china shop. Hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> what is he? Yeah, a bull in a china shop. When he oh, no money. no money. He's a bull in the china he's a bull. shop? He ain't trying to hear that shit. Listen, and then, bro. No, it's a different swag when he got money, though. Oh, when he got money? He got money. Watch out. He's a whole nother dude. Watch the fuck out. Okay, speaking of money, just, th just made me think about something. Fellas, this is a Vegas story. <laughs> God damn it, here it is. It happened. Thought what about year? it earlier today, what and my soul got it? tickled. What year is it? I'm glad you asked. 2000. Nah, nah, nah. Mm -mm. Go back. Nah, it ain't 2000. Excuse me. It's 2007, right before I got the money. Mm. It's 2007 before I got the money. Oh, yeah, there it is. I'm hustling, trying to get my, my, my weight up in, in Vegas in the, you know, in the, in the, on, the, on the comedy tip. Yeah. I don't know nobody. I can't get up. I can't really get up right there. But I got a little spot that I found out about. Nice little bar. I can go work that. And I can get a cut of that door. D-Lay don't want just to tell some jokes. He wants that money. He got to have it. Billy, I got to have it. Got to keep that money coming in. So I said, you know what? Let me roll over to this spot and talk to these people. I went over there and talked to them. I said, hey, listen, I want to get this spot. The name of the spot was the Square Apple on Sahara. Oh, man, I remember. Simon, I'm going back right there. Man, I remember. Square Apple? The Square Apple. It's on Sahara Boulevard. Is it, is it inside of a casino? Nope, not out. It's standalone club. It's a little Ooh. club. And it's owned by some Sicilians. Okay. The boy's doing crime in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Tony. <laughs> I know y'all was doing crime in there. That was a front. I didn't know then. Y'all use me, but I know now. You slick son of a bitch, you. Mm -hmm. So Tony is the guy who's running the Square Apple. Right. Square Apple is a nice little spot, bro. Holds maybe like 120 people. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like bar area had like some little poker machines on around there. Mm -hmm. You know, and it wasn't like a whole lot going on in there. So I said, let me go in there and I can just you know do a comedy night and bring my casino people in there, right? So I go in there the first night, I'm looking for Tony, can't find Tony. Talking to the lady, he listen, I'm a D-Lay, you know, I'm new in town, I'm trying to get a spot. You know, I can bring some people in here from the casino, I'm a dealer, let me bring them in. Well, I'm gonna let you talk to Tony, when Tony comes in, Tony makes all the decisions, he keeps talking to Tony. Tony's just a mysterious guy that nobody fucking sees. Finally, <clears throat> I go up there and I meet with Tony. Tony 
is dressed immaculate. The nigga suit's amazing. Yeah. Laid down, slick hair, cool guy, rings on all fingers, smooth cat, very smooth. I said, how you doing, Tony? My name is D-Day. I've been hearing about you, kid. I've been hearing about you. And uh, he said, you wanna do a night at the club? And, uh, you know, I, I don't know you, kid. I, I don't know you. And I don't know what type of crowd you're bringing in. He said, I don't know, kid, I don't know. Tony, I, I work at the casino. You know, that's pretty much my crowd. When we bring in dealers, people that tip, you know, your wait staff, you know, these people are heavy in the tip industry. Right. Yeah, you know, kid, I don't know, you know. He's, yeah, he's, I don't want to do one of these uh, yeah, deaf comedy jam things. Uh, you know, I, I want to keep a good club, a clean club, you know. I don't want all that, uh, no disrespect, black it up. <laughs> you want to black it up? Finally, it came out. I want to black it up. I was like, okay, cool. I got you. I know what you're looking for. You want to keep it cool. Yeah. Give me a night. He gives me a night. The night that he chooses for me is not a good night. Yeah. The dealers, I don't know if something was going on, it wasn't a good night, so I couldn't really get the promotion off right, right? Maybe 15 people show up. Ah. Tony walked up to me, you know, kid, listen, come here, come here, kid. Listen, you know, that's what I was talking to you about, you know, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to black the club up and, uh, you know, you did what I thought you'd do. Uh, you didn't do it. So, uh, you know what, I don't know if I want to do this. I said, Tony, listen, give me like a month to come back in here and do my thing. Kid, I don't know, kid. You maybe should take your act down the street, you know. They, uh, <laughs> there's got plenty of spots you can go to. Hey, you know, there's the square apple, you know. You're not your type of hype, you know. Mm. Tony, just give me a month. You know what, kid? Let's do one more dance. Yeah, you know, one more dance, you know. Give it a shot at it. Come back and uh, we see, you know. After this, kid, I can't do no more favors. Cool, Tony. He give me the night. That bitch packed out. I got it like I wanted. You rocking. I got all these casino people in there, all these dealers. I got this bitch packed. Yeah. And they got four booths, two on this side, two on this side. One of the booths got to be for Tony and his people. Right. Period. This bitch is packed. Tony's loving it. Waitress is loving it. Right. We tipping this bitch lit. Tony comes up to me, he say, come here, kid, let me talk to you. You did good tonight. Look at the, the people that came out to see you. You know, it's a good, it's a good thing you did, you know. Everybody's out, but I, uh, I noticed your act. You know, you like to, uh, you like to make fun of the crowd, you know. Uh, tonight, you know, kind of lay easy, you know, uh, on my table. You know, <laughs> I got my guys <laughs> On his table. You know, yeah. like, you know, hey, listen, leave us alone, you know. Make fun <laughs> of the other people. You know, do your thing, you know. Hey, have fun, kid. It's your night. Look at it. But they leave that goddamn table alone. <laughs> but uh, leave us alone. You know? Look at us. We're good guys. Cool. Mm. Yeah, you go good up guys. there. Good guys. I'm doing my shit. They're loving me. But I keep looking at that table. And you want to say something. I want to say something, Cause, Marcus. Cause whenever they tell you not to table. fuck with them, the person they tell you not to fuck with I want to fuck That's with the, the table, Marcus. That's the target. Man, they in that bitch. They got butterfly collars on. I got so many, I got, and they sitting there and ain't nobody laughing, they just sitting there and they got these long hair dudes, these motherfuckers don't have hair cut, they ain't got hair dudes, they just in there and they just, for me sitting ducks, I want it. You want it. I can't take it, I go in. You I hit the table. You hit the fucking, no the fuck you did. <laughs> hit the table. You hit the owner's table? I had to hit the owner's table. Come on, bro. Went to the right guy. Bam! What you don't do is you don't hit the owner's table. Like Brother that. got on a orange tangerine-ish type suit, right? It's tangerine-ish. And he's got a, he's got a, like a pocket square. And the, the thing don't go with the suit, but it's just all loud. All that shit. Right? Loud. And he got the rings on his finger and he's sitting, he, he got the rings sitting out on the table so you can see the motherfuckers. They're just sitting out there. They ain't doing nothing, they ain't grabbing no drink, they ain't doing shit. They just out there. Right. And I started, so I say, hey man, we know you're clean. We know you're clean. We see, hey brother, hey listen, hey man, listen, that outfit, that's a nice, what's that, a five piece? Six piece? 
So the AP, I'm going in. That AP soup, that motherfucker came with a biscuit and coleslaw. Oh, I'm going, I'm, I'm feeling, they laughing. You going hard. I'm going hard. Told you nigga his soup came with biscuits and a motherfucking coleslaw. I'm feeling good. Yeah, Shining. Good. Going to my act. Have a great night. Bam. Win. Everybody's loving me. I'm feeling good. I'm going to the bar. I'm having a drinks. The lady says, hey, Tony needs to talk with you at his table. And I was like, all right, so I was to get my drink. No, Tony's already got your drink at his table. Tony got the drink already at the table. All right, cool. Tony got, I don't know why Tony got the drink already, but fuck it, let's get over to Tony's table because he got the drink. Get over to yeah. the table. Mm -mm. Tony, what's up, Tony? Oh, I'm a shit. Kid, kid, let him in. It's like, let him in. It's four niggas at the table in a booth. Four niggas in the booth. All of them got on suits and, and rings. And what you got on? Oh, I'm hip hopped out. I'm hip hopped the fuck out. Timberlands, sweats. Just, you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm, so, I'm still smooth with it. It ain't no like, like some hip, I'm, I'm still smooth. I'm still delay. Yeah. You still delay. So, Tony says, let the kid in. So the other two get out, and let him in, and I'm sitting right in the middle, right? My drink right in the middle. I'm like, oh shit. They got you boxed in. You fell I'm for the boxing. I'm in it. Mean, you fell for the boxing. You ain't gonna do nothing to me in the club. This is the Jimmy Hoffa boxing. It is, but you can't, you ain't gonna the kill me in the square. Boxing. I'm in the square apple, you can't, hey, you can't kill me in the square apple. You got to kill me outside the square apple. But I'm in the square apple, so I know you got me locked in. You can't kill me. There's people partying in this bitch and drinking. And I brought all these people. So you can't kill me in front of all these people that I brought. Hey, kid, uh, you got talent, kid. Yeah, yeah, you just got talent. You just got, got talent. It's, it's good. But uh, you don't listen so well. <laughs> and uh, before you went up, I told you, I said, uh, I said, leave us alone, you know? That guy right there. You don't, you don't know that guy, but that, that guy's a somebody. And uh, you hide him. You hide the guy. <laughs> you know, you, you hide him. You, you got the guy feeling bad. You know, he's, uh, he's, uh, he just got out. You know, the guy and, uh, you know, you, you, you got him feeling bad. Now, normally, you know, something like this, you know, it's, a, it's sort of a big deal. You know, you kind of get rid of it. I gotta get out of here. It, uh, you know, we like you, kid. We like you. So, uh, you know, we're kind of gonna let you off with the morning. You know? Yeah. Hey, Vito, get out of here. Let him out of there. Hey, kid. Take this easy. It's not personal. Okay? Apologize to him. You hurt him. I was like, hey, so I apologize. Stop it. What's the smiles for? <laughs> You're smiling at the fear. You gotta, you gotta, you hurt him. I apologize to the guy. Wow. Lead that night, I was like, I'm not fucking with the square apple no more. I'm done with the square apple. Mm. I'm not fucking with it. Mm -mm. If I'm gonna do a gig, I'm gonna do it somewhere else. Right? Because I'm a blackjack dealer. That's what I do. Dealing blackjack, go back to my regular shit as a dealer. Now, I talk shit as a dealer. I get this popping. That's what I do. I do what I do, right? So they put me in a high limit night, one night. I don't like to be in a high limit because I talk shit. In a high limit, they want you to be real reserved. Fuck it. Sitting there, dealing one night, having a good time, talking my shit, my table lit, like they normally do. Some guys walk up. You can feel the energy of somebody. You can feel the presence of a somebody. Just, you can just feel it. People start moving, trying to kind of position themselves, right? See a guy, long fucking hair, I'm like, Oh shit, that's the crew. I still got two spots open to play. Reserve table, $100 limit. You need $100 to play, period, right? Guy blocks the seat off. Don't tell nothing, just blocks the seat off. I'm like, you holding that for you, my man? That's freeze his hand. Me. That nigga freeze me. He froze you, okay. Cool, not a problem. Walks up, guy walks up. His hair is shorter. The face is recognizable. Suited and booted. Yeah. Butterfly collar. Mm -mm. Rings on his finger. I said, oh shit, that's Tony. I said, motherfucker, Tony. I don't want to jump the gun and yell his name out because I know how he operate. He like the movement silence. I'm like, what's up, Tony? It's okay. How you doing, kid? I was like, I'm 
you know, back to Dylan. He never came back to the club. You know, that night was a good night for us. And uh, we thought we could continue that night. It was a Thursday. And uh, Thursdays are not good for us. What day are we? Thursday. <laughs> It was a Thursday. And, and that was it, that, that night, that Thursday. That, that you, Thursday was What'd that, you do to his friend? That Thursday. Ah, uh, mate, I hide him. Okay. I hide the guy on a Thursday. On a what day? On a Thursday. And what'd you do to him? I hide him. Okay. It okay. was a Thursday. And, uh, it's one of the no kid that, uh, who always have you back in the club, especially on a Thursday. <laughs> it's the worst day. <laughs> And he looked me dead in my eye and he said, Did you miss me? God damn it! Took you around the world and dropped y'all asses off, man. This is Did You Miss Me, the hottest storytelling podcast in the game. I'm D-Lay. I'm Billy Surreal. Man, we got some hot shit for y'all today, man. Coming in hot and heavy, man. One of the friends of the show, not just a guest, but a friend of the show. It's a family. Marcus King in the building, y'all. Marcus King, how you feeling, brother? Man, I feel with my hands most of the time. Hey, man! Unless I can use something else. Hashtag me too. And let me just ask you what I'm talking about. If you ever watch the Jamie Foxx show, mm -hmm. if you ever watch Hang With Mr. Cooper, talk to him. This is the man that put it together for you. That's right. Mm. Right here. Watch Tony. 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 Hey. Hey. Tony. Yeah. He's hey. a guy's day. Thank you guys for having me, man. This is great. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you for coming. Billy said you coming. I'm a, can I be honest with you? Go ahead. Because all we do is be honest with you. Go ahead. I shoot. said, Billy, Marcus is going to horse fuck you. <laughs> Marcus is, Marcus gonna horse fuck is me. not going to come. He's going to horse fuck me. They didn't have no faith in me. It, it I didn't. said, Billy, you're going to get horse fucked. <laughs> I just don't see him, buddy. From, I want to. From the back? Horse fuck sideways. Uh-uh. Sideways. But he showed up, goddammit. Hey, you know As what? As a man of his word, he did. When Billy Sorrells calls me, I'm there. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. easy. This is a layup. You know what's crazy? Hold up, Marcus. Marcus do shit that he don't be talking about. Like, he really do some good shit that niggas don't even be knowing. Because let me tell you how I know this. I signed up. They talked me into doing it. People be corny. Let me say something. That's the best way to book a comedian. Get that nigga drunk. He will say yes to, yeah, hey, you want me, I, I'll come. I got booked for this, um, some kids that was locked up. I don't know how the fuck you get me to agree to that. But they locked up. Kids was locked the fuck up. I was like, man, fuck it. I'll do it. Cause it just felt like I should be doing some shit like that. Right, that morning I get up, Get to the spot. They got a, like a nice little bus for us, everything. I get on the bus. I see Mark. I'm like, oh, the fuck yeah. is Marcus doing here? Yeah, fucking yeah. with these little fucked up kids. God, and he was in there. <laughs> and I was just like, that's a good dude. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't got to fuck with these kids. But he going doing something for the kids. I, that's when I was like, that's when I looked at him and I said, he ain't got to fuck with these kids. These kids are already fucked up. He ain't gotta be giving he that still ain't gotta be fucking. I was like, you know what? That's a good a guy. I do good. He's a good dude. He's a good guy. He's just somebody. I I like him. You that's know? that's you threw me off with that, man. I didn't even uh You remember that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah now I remember few, the whole thing back. now. Yep. Yeah, you know why I did that? Because when I grew up, I was a kid, um, my uncle worked in juvenile hall. So um, that's where me and my boys used to go play, you know, because that was the only gym we could get in. So y'all playing basketball? Playing basketball. With the kids that's in juvenile? We playing against the counselors. We playing against the counselors. We couldn't play against the kids because that was a opportunity to escape. Just, yeah, I'm going to yeah. run away. You and let me play you one-on-one -on -one and I'm locked up? Yeah, I'm, I'm out. Gonna fuck, how many you score on me? Yeah. I'm getting away. <laughs> Yeah. You they, can score 30 on me, goddamn it. Yeah. I got freedom at the end of this goddamn that's match. That's it. He can be going. That, that sub out? Sub? It's really the sub out. Man, sub I'm out. gone. I'm playing a hard two minutes. And I'm out. And I'm going to get some freedom. Yeah. Can I so, say what happened that night? What you do, dog? That I, night at the, uh, oh, man. What the fuck did you do? Simo. Didi, what you, you do? do? I'm glad we got this show. <laughs> hey, Ernest. Yo. How the fuck we going to do it without you? I know you got money, but we couldn't do the show without you. Damn sure could. Big money E. Big money, excuse me, I apologize. See, See I told you that motherfucker yeah. stick. Big, Big money E. Big money E. Big money, that bitch stick. 
That motherfucker's in there. That motherfucker. Hey, he wants it out. It stays in there. Big money. Big money is in that thing. Big money. Hey, bro. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. I, was, I didn't even say nothing. I told one person that was on the trip with me. And I, and I showed him to verify what I was talking about. They had these female, these little girls in like little, I, listen, just hear me. I need you to hear me. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you need to hear me. I'm going to let y'all finish this off. Oh I'm looking because y'all both laughing. I, I want to see what this is Because they had these girls, they were like in like PT outfits, right? Like t-shirt shorts, right? So we walked in, right? And I don't know, I was kind of trailing behind doing something. Right? And they were lining these girls up against the thing. This girl pulls a pussy into the fence. And sticks her pussy lips into the fence. I was like, now regardless of who you are as a man, if you see a pussy in some, in, my bad, we good to go. Yeah. If you see a pussy in some lips in in the fence, you're gonna look. I don't. You. I didn't mean to. I wasn't staring. I just looked. I was like, what is more of a shock? So I was like, oh, this is crazy. These girls are locked up. I, Cause I thought we was just doing it for guys. Yeah. I didn't know it was girls involved with it too. Yeah. This yeah. is a girls and guys thing. So I was like, this they wild. Yeah. Cool. We get in there while I'm performing. This chick is like on the second row, like pulling a pussy to the side. I'm like, you are raw. I can't. I, nobody knows this at the time. Nobody knows this at the time. Little Terrence. Is on the show. The looks. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. said, "Hey man, how old are these girls?" I don't know. He's like, "Oh man, you know, some of them about to turn 19." I was like, "What?" Because they look like mature women. Some of them look like mature women. So I said, "Bro, look at girl. Look at this girl over here. Look, look at this." He was like, "What's going on?" And he sees her. She's he catches her, and I was like, "He caught you when you get caught." You put your pussy up. You don't keep doing it. One of the guys comes over, one of the officers comes over to him. He say, man, listen, I want to apologize, but we're taking her. And they gave this girl, I don't know, it was some extra shit. Mm -hmm. But I was like, that's when it hit me with the whole thing. I was like, this is just not like a performance. Like, this is something that could change these kids' lives. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I was like, and it just added on, like, this man is that he ain't got to be there. But I remember that moment being, I was like, this girl don't give a fuck. She may not get out anymore. I don't know what the fuck she did. Mm -hmm. But we did serve a higher cause than just making people laugh. Mm -hmm. And that's what hit me. Yeah, that was a, that was a great experience, man. I, I did it because, you know, I grew up in that situation, not as an uh, inmate, but as somebody that would be in that environment. And I knew half of the people that in Juvenile Hall, they were all from my neighborhood in Oakland. So when my uncle ran a juvenile hall, uh, he, did, he, he didn't have a podcast, but he would lock himself in his closet, you know, and he'd be reading his racing for him because he's a supervisor. And he would bring these kids in, like one at, especially when I'm there, one at a time before we go to the basketball court, and he would say, tell me a story and it better be good. And these kids would tell their stories about how they got incarcerated. And my uncle seemed to be able to reason with them on a whole different level. Like this one kid told a story that um, he said, well, Mr. Hendricks, you know, me and my boys was rolling around. And this is in the 80s. Yeah. He said, me and my boys was rolling around. These 15-year-old kids, they stole a car. They riding around in the car around Oakland. They grabbed this girl that they knew that wanted to get down with them. And he said, he was like, you want to get down with us? Get in the trunk. So now they're riding around all day with the girl in the trunk. And I'm like, why would they put the girl in the trunk? You know, but they got a front in front of their dudes. So the dude was like, hey, telling the girl, hey, you want to get down with me? You got to do my dude, right? So the girl do, does the dude and all that. And they tell this whole story, and it's kind of tragic. But my uncle seemed to reason with this kid who did it, because we don't know why he did it. It's a power thing. It's a street thing. We don't know why he did it. But my uncle, and I was kind of young too, it was impressionable for me. My uncle was like, all right, I understand where you're going. I respect you for telling me the truth and telling me the story. Go back to your room. I, I appreciate that one big thing, you took care of your homeboy. <laughs> oh, <God damn. laughs> he said, you looked out for him, so I can't hate on you for that. I was like, 
damn, is that the lesson you're going to learn here? Right. But they connected with my uncle in a different way because he related <laughs> to us. I was like, damn, okay, can we go to the gym now? You know, so those kind of stories happened all the time. Like, he had this dude that killed his whole family over some yo-yos, you know, and they call him the yo-yo killer. Killed, like, five people in his family, and he was playing with the yo-yo when the police showed up. And this is a white boy, of course. So, <laughs> you got to clear that up right away. We Ain't no yeah. niggas killing you on no uh, yo-yo. Oh, no, now. yo-yo. Now, so, might, now, you might get choked shit out with a yo-yo. Yeah, but, you know, you hear about the massacres, especially then when, when gun violence wasn't that prevalent. So he killed a whole family over the yo-yo. So my uncle would make him do silly things. He'd say, put these stamps in this book until you feel it. I mean, just silly tasks to demean and diminish his power because he did that as a show of power. Like when you're incarcerated, and I've been from the juvenile hall to San Quentin to some of the toughest prisons. When you're incarcerated, you know, your badge of honor is what you did to get in there. Yeah. You know, so he tried to diminish the power of those people who come in there with these prowess of I got a badge of honor because I did this heinous crime. Mm -hmm. You know, so he would do things. So he had a whole psychological because he was a street dude. So he had a whole psychological way of dealing with things. So when we went to the juvenile hall and I forgot, man, I'm sorry, man, that was I remember now. It was kind of funny because it was a it was a group of comedians. They were going to entertain the kids. And for them, those were the kids, the privileged kids were in there. So that right. girl that you saw exposing herself like that, she was one of the girls who had done good deeds. And some of those kids was transitional. And transitional means when, and I don't know the technical term, means when you're under 18, they had that group. And then you had those transition kids between 19 and 21. Because you're not really old enough to, to, you know, if you got a life sentence, you're not going to start in the penitentiary, sometimes they'll keep you in the hall until you get older. So some of them girls were like older girls. They were like grown enough to know the difference. But it's so much crime and so much tragic stories and broken families. I know we ain't here trying to tell sad stories, but you got to look at what brought that girl to that moment. And I know you did. And then a lot of the comedians looked at what brought all these kids to their moments that they ended up here in front of us. Why are we here? So you really hit the wall in terms of reality. And though you're trying to make, make them kids laugh, like Slink got up. We were just talking about this every day. Slink Johnson got up and was like, I know y'all don't want to hear no good stuff. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. You know, I know y'all want me to say, you know, get money and get bitches. <laughs> <laughs> the kids were looking around like, no, nah, we didn't even expect it. We wanted to hear some jokes, but right. get money and get bitches. And some of them girls were like, get bitches. And they would come from... <laughs> Trafficking and all kind of stuff. So I think they told Slink, we don't need you to come back. Uh, <laughs> we good with you. Uh, but he told him, you remember that? Money. You remember that? He got up and said that. He was like, we like, like, don't want me to talk about, you know, make y'all laugh and hoop hop and whatever and like talk about getting money and getting bitches, but like, like I want to talk to y'all about some real shit. And the kids was like, and we were like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to talk to these kids? <laughs> <laughs> and they ask him, don't curse, don't do none of yeah. that shit. And he's and he like, with that. fuck that. I know what life on the street yeah. is. Yeah. Get money and get bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And we all look around. <laughs> okay. Hey, bro. And he they were did. Like, <laughs> he did. He just walked in there and was like, yeah. Because they told us don't curse. <laughs> they told us. And oh, the, it, they said don't curse or whatnot. But like, fuck that. We got, y'all need to hear the shit real. You know what I mean? For some real niggas, you know what I mean? Y'all need to hear this shit. You know what I mean? You know, it's niggas, niggas they here over bitches and it's oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pop. Pop slink. And he was like, I'm just saying. I'm like, okay. All right, next. Yeah. Your turn, D-Lay. Man. <laughs> so yeah, so those kind of stories, man, are cool, man. But it just takes me back to, you know, back when I was in Oakland and um Got into the entertainment business. Yeah. And, you know, you learn your little lessons the hard way. You know, I started off as a concert promoter. And one of my mentors who I started working with, he told me, man, you know, you try to take that street vernacular into the business. Like, everybody's hard. And uh, at the time, you know, he was managing too short. So everybody was working for short and doing the street work and all of that. And the studio was short and all that. And... Uh, my whole thing is I just want to go out on the road. So the first time I got a chance to go out on the road, you know, I'm going to make it happen. So I never went out on the road with Short. 
You know, short is like, oh, yeah, 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 but it never happened. So when I got in the comedy business, I was like, hey, I'm going to do my own stuff, get my own talent, go on the road and tour and hit the country and all that, because I'd never really been out of Oakland other than, you know, playing basketball or whatever. So uh, my boy told me, look, man, my mentor, Lionel B, he said, look, man, if you go on the road and you settle in your dates, which means you're getting the money for the performance for your acts, you can't let nobody fuck you. Because if they, if they steal from you, if they get you in any kind of way, that word is going to get all over the country and they're going to know they can get you. I said, Lionel B, they ain't getting me. I don't care what it is. They ain't getting me. So my first big time out of Oakland, we had it. We toured and we was doing this tour all over the country. It was Mark Curry, Jamie Foxx, Chris Tucker. No, Chris, Chris, uh, shit, the weed is killing me. Spencer? Uh, no, uh, Chris Thomas. Chris Thomas, Chris the Thomas. mayor. And the mayor and Yvette Wilson. Man, and we, this was the first black comedy tour that probably wasn't no black group of comedians touring at the time at all. And uh, at the time, nobody really knew Fox like that. It was Fox had Wanda. But Curry was on, um, he was on Hang, Hang with, with Mr. Mr. Cooper. He was the dude, right? Yeah. So we're both from Oakland, and we're touring now. It's me and my boy Daryl Brooks. We're out there, you know, out of D.C. We put the show together, and we hit Chicago. Everything is cool till we hit Chicago. And we at the Chicago Theater. And the promoter was his black promoter named Al Kennedy. I say his name in the public. Oh, we gotta have that. You know, they we gotta have a name. They want Al have gotta Kennedy. Have Al Kennedy. Al out of Chi Town. Out of Chi Town. Town. And this was uh, what was this? This was 1992, something like that. 91, 92. Right. And Al Kennedy was a promoter. And Al, you know, he talked to me and he talked me into giving him the date because other other. Uh, I guess white promoters had the other dates, you know, and the dates were doing well. And in Chicago, we played the Chicago Theater. And the, 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 the show did okay, but it didn't really make money. And I'm like, okay, we didn't really make money here, but we got to get paid. So I got to go get my money, because if this get around, this going to go bad. I heard Lionel B in my ear. I said, if this go bad, I don't know what we're going to do. So I said, Al, you know, after the show, I said, Al. You know, let's let's you know, let's break bread, man. We got to get paid. We got to go. Al said, I got your money. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just walk back here with me. So we go back in the little side room in the theater and he's talking to the white man who runs the theater. And the white man said, yeah, thought this would do better. And they tell it all these sad stories about how they didn't make money. Right. And I said that your money don't have nothing to do with me. me. Shit. You, yeah. Hey, y'all that. Y'all figure that out. You know, so I'm like, you know, that's my attitude right now. So we're not getting paid there. I said, we're not. He said, man, I got your money. Come on. So we leave the dude's room. He said, you just roll with me. So his car is parked on the side of the theater in the little alley, right? So we go in to get in the car. Then there's three other dudes coming with us. I said, oh, this shit is about to go bad. I see it right now. You feel it. Man, I, you, you know how you feel that danger in your neck? You feel it. I said, three, where, where, where you sitting at in the car? That's, that was the key, where I'm sitting. So I said, I'm going to sit right behind Al. I'm not going to get in the front. Got, you can't get, get in the front. I, I'm going to sit You're right behind out the front out. if you get in the front. I'm going to be by the door. Yes. Behind, behind that. Because if it go bad, get the driver. he going bad with me. With the driver. There you go. There you go. You've done yeah. this before. I got you. Because <laughs> all it's going to go bad for all of Everybody. us. Everybody. Everybody got to go. So I said, and I don't know Chicago. I'm from <laughs> Oakland. So we riding, and Al is running every light. It's about... 1.30 in the morning, he running every light like shh, shh, and talking shit like, you know, ain't no big deal. Like he do this all the time. I said, we going to jail. I see what this is. You're trying this to get us out of jail. I, this is a setup. Right. You know, we're going to get pulled over. I'm the, it's going to be on me. They're right. going to stick me. I said, oh, okay. So now I got my hand on, my hand on the handle of the door a little bit. You ready to every jump? <laughs> get ready to jump on these bitches. But the nigga. Jump, Marcus. The nigga ain't stopping at nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't no jump out points or nothing. He ain't. Like, I'm like, okay, now. Now, now. The nigga, jump out okay, here come a red light. Shoo. <laughs> God damn it. You ain't stop. stopping at nothing. So we roll it through the south side. Now we're in the south side of Chicago because I know when I'm going south. Right. Man, we pull up at this house. This is after about a 30 minute ride. 
of running red lights. Uh, yeah, running red lights like it ain't nobody's business. He didn't stop. We never stopped. Yeah. So we pull up in front of his house. It's dark. I don't get your goddamn eye. He mumbling to himself. Right. Now nah, I'm in the car with these niggas who I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and these niggas looking at me like, you know, like I'm the last piece of chicken on the table. Right. I'm like, okay, uh, should I bounce now? Or should I wait and see what's going to happen when he come out? Because right. if they was going to get me, he would have got, got me. Right. Man, he came back, hand me a little bag, like an old paper bag, looked like some old fried chicken in it before he put the money in it. So I looked there. I didn't count the money. Don't you count in front of them. No, sir. They make I looked shit. at the money to make sure it was money. They, right. I put that money under my and still had my hand on the oh, handle. Keep your goddamn hand on the handle. <laughs> we riding back. I said, okay, shit. So I'm starting to relax. And then we get downtown and we get in a little traffic jam right in front of all jokes aside. And I know the dude who owned the club. Yeah. So I go, oh, shit, that's all jokes aside. And it's a traffic jam. And he's trying to get around the traffic because the club is packed. He said, uh, I said, Al, I just get out right here. Nah, I'm going to take you back to your hotel, man. Nah, I'm good, man. I get out right And I got out. I didn't say nothing to Al or nothing. I ran it all jokes aside, and I knew the dude. I was like, man, I need to use the, you know, your office. So I'll go back, count the money. All the money was there. Yeah. I said, God damn it, damn, Al. Al. <laughs> and I was sweating because this is the thing, too. When you work with, with us, they going to think you unscrupulous about your business anyway, even your own acts, even your own people. So if I come back short, they're going to say, King, you shorted us. So I can't let him short me because I can't go back to my acts and say, y'all short. So all the money was there. I put the money back in my coat and I walked back to my hotel. So for years, I said, this Al Kennedy dude, I don't, I ain't never, you know. And me and Al didn't talk for a couple of years. I found out on the street that Al was undercover police. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. This motherfucker was undercover posing as a promoter <laughs> with these other niggas who are criminals. <laughs> <laughs> I said, nigga, I'm on a stage. <laughs> <laughs> this is set up for these other niggas. Uh, <laughs> man, I'm on a stage. So... I never knew that Al was undercover. I said, nigga, you didn't tell me you was undercover? Oh, come on, man. You saw. <laughs> you I'm saw. <laughs> nigga, really? <laughs> so Al end up, Al is the coolest dude in the world. He cool as fuck. Al end up retiring from the police, Chicago Police Department. And now he's really a concert promoter. Wow. wow. So he do dates in Chicago and all around Chicago all the time. One of the best promoters in town. One of the black, best black promoters in town. Handles Great his business. Great fucking story, man. Great it, story. Thank you. Wow. Man. Thank you. Uh, we got more great stories coming up. Did You Miss Me Podcast. We'll be right back. What's up, everybody? I'm D-Lay. And I'm Billy Sorrells. This is the number one storytelling podcast in the world, people. We're here for you guys, and we're doing mm -hmm. something special. Patreon.com is a site that you guys need to check out. We're doing special things, exclusive things for you guys, mm -hmm. like uh, early access to some of the episodes. Yeah, man, most definitely. Bonus content that you wouldn't find anywhere else. Yes, discounted uh, 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 merchandise. Oh, yeah, we're giving away a lot of shit. People, you got to, but this is for, for some of our serious followers, our people that are really down with the Did You Miss Me podcast. We're doing this thing for you guys. And if you're not familiar with Patreon, go in and we'll give you guys all the luxuries that Did You Miss Me Podcast And you know, what, you know how we know if they're real fans? How do we know? They know this number right here. 323-385-9734. We'll get somebody over there to you. And we're back. Yes, like we never left. And you producing television and then producing and managing in movies had to led you down some interesting roles. Billy Sorrells, uh, I'm going to come back to the road one more time. Okay. Because mm -hmm. this is, uh, this is, this is fun. The yeah. road shit is always fun. Uh, I got to tell this story when we were on the road and Speedy, I think a lot of people know Speedy. Uh, you got to know his act. He does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest! Ernest! He just shitted on that man's set. <laughs> uh, we, love, we love Speedy. You gotta know it. Does it all the time. <laughs> How could you miss it? Speedy has a joke. Um, he says, uh, he tries to get the guys on his side. He says, uh, 
you know, fellas, you know what we like, and they play the record, ain't no fun if your homies can't have none, right? So we do that 20, 30 cities, and they playing the record. We so tired of hearing the record, everybody on the road with him, all the production people, we said, let's get speedy. So we had a let's get speedy moment uh, in a few cities. <laughs> so uh, I think we're in Detroit. They said, let's wait till it's big, it's packed. <laughs> Five <laughs> yeah. Years. And Speedy said, you know what we like, fellas, and they're supposed to play Ain't No Fun if your homies can't have none, you know, for the ladies. And we played Can We Talk by Tevin Campbell. <laughs> we played in the next city, so now he don't know what we're going to play, right? The next city we uh, play. <laughs> nigga, Can We <laughs> Talk? <laughs> fellas, you know what we like. Do, 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 do. And, and can We <laughs> Talk? <laughs> <laughs> There My you go. God. Speedy was like, ain't that a bitch? You know how Speedy is. <laughs> ain't, ain't that, that a bitch. bitch. So the next city we played, It's Raining Man by the Weather Girl. <laughs> <laughs> then the third city after we start setting this up, Speedy said, you know, fellas, you know the song we like. And now he's looking around. <laughs> <laughs> then we played the right record, right? But we would tease Speedy like that because Speedy would do, Speedy is a Virgo. I'm a Virgo, so I'm I understand. Virgo. Oh, man, I knew it was something. Yep. I knew it was something. Sorry. Uh, so we said, uh, Fox at the time, it was Jamie Foxx's tour. Fox said, man, we're trying to move stealthily through each city. So everywhere we go, Speedy's shopping. Speedy shops. He likes to shop. He likes to, Speedy's always fly. And he said, Fox was like, King, you got to talk to Speedy about, Speedy got all of these bags, big bags, small bags, Gucci bags, all kind of bags. That he got, I said, I don't know what's in those bags. <laughs> he got seven or eight bags. But he got a bag on his shoulder, a bag in his hand, a bag he carrying. He got seven or eight, like, little bags, right. big bags. And he said, man, he got to kill some of these bags. <laughs> so we played Hartford, Connecticut. And it was like one of those hard runs where we're doing four shows in three days down there. We played Hartford, Connecticut, and we had to fly from Hartford to Atlanta, to get to Jackson, Mississippi, right? Mm -hmm. And the layover was in Atlanta. So we go, we in the lounge, and we know the lady there, Delta, and we in the de sponsor. No, Delta, not a sponsor. So we in the Delta lounge, right? And we all tired, so we all knocked out because we done went to the party, whatever, in, in Hartford. So we tired, and uh, they said the plane is ready to take off, right? They come get us, get on the plane, and Speedy left one of his bags. So I'm like, now, Fox done told him, Speedy, kill the bags. I told him, Speedy, you got to kill the bags, man. Too many bags. Ah, oh, fuck, you know, Speedy, no, fuck you, can't I, I, I handle my <laughs> shit. I said, okay. So he left one of his bags sitting there by the chair. So I take the bag so we don't leave anything. And we get on the plane, right? We all get on the plane, our whole crew. Speedy go sit down. I said, hey, Fox, Speedy left one of his bags. I looked in the bag. No, he, I gave it to him. He looked in the bag. It was all the money Speedy had made from about 30 cities. <laughs> <laughs> right? Cash. Because he going to buy bags. Right? I said, damn. He said, look at that. I said, oh. I was like, should we split it up? Should we, what should we do with it? He said, he zipped it back up. He handed it back to me and said, all of a sudden, you see Speedy fly by me. <laughs> We're on the plane. We, we sitting up front. We see Speedy fly. I say, hey, Speedy, wait a minute, wait a minute. And Speedy's like, fuck you, man, fuck you. I got to go get. And they're about to take, the plane is about to take off. You don't give a shit. I said, Fox, should I go, should I go get him? He said, no. Let him, let him, let it go. I said, how far you want to take it? All the way. <laughs> All the way. I said, okay. So they said, hey, buckle up. We're about to take off. Speedy is not on the plane. <laughs> Speedy is the opening act. It's only two flights from Atlanta to Jackson, Mississippi. One is in the morning, the one we on, and one gets in right before the show. So we didn't want to take that flight because we could have missed the show. Right. So we on that flight. So we fly to Jackson and leave Speedy. <laughs> right? This is in the commercial flying days when, you know, we're no private. We was just commercial. So we leave Speedy. We get to Jackson, and that was a whole nother ordeal because I think the driver, no disrespect to y'all from the South, but the driver, I could have swore he just came off the plantation. 
Because <laughs> Philip told him, he said, look, man, <laughs> Philip was the road manager, but our promoter was one of the guys, Kyle Newport. And Kyle booked the car. We're going through a whole ordeal. Now, it's hot. We're tired. Everybody trying to get to the bad hotel so we can rest for the show. And he said, I'm not going nowhere till Mr. Newport say I can go. I said, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> so he said, Mr. Mr. Newport say don't do nothing till he say do it. This is the driver. <laughs> I said, okay, this is going to be one of those trips. So Phil said, look, I'm going to beat your motherfucking ass if you don't get a motherfucking car. So we went Oakland on him. So the dude finally took off. We get to the hotel. We do our, me and Johnny Mac do our little routine because me and Johnny Mac play Madden before we go to the venue. <laughs> Speedy know it, because Speedy tried to jump in our Madden game. So we playing Madden before the show, right? We're about two hours before the show. <laughs> Speedy come in to the room, knock on the door. I say, hey, Speedy. And we keep playing Madden, right? Speedy is sweating. Look like he been crying. <laughs> I look at my watch. I say, hey, Speedy, your pickup, because Speedy's on the early pickup to go to the venue. <laughs> I say, your pickup is about 10 minutes, man. You better get ready. Man, I had all my rent money, <laughs> all my child support, all my everything money in my bag, man. I said, damn. damn. <laughs> For real? That's fucked up. Hey, Johnny Mac. Uh, <laughs> and many, because Fox said, go all the way. How far? Go all the way. All the way. <laughs> Me and Johnny Mac, we trying to hold back as much as we can. I said, Johnny Mac, this shit is hilarious. So Speedy sulk out and walk out of the room. And we see Speedy at the show, right? I said, Fox. And we on the second trip, so Speedy's already on stage. And Speedy's doing his act like, yeah, some medium. Yeah. Nigga, sad than a motherfucker. <laughs> Boy, you all, do not want to perform. <laughs> all his jokes is like, yeah, so anyway. <laughs> you know, shit is crazy. Shit is crazy. Shit is crazy. And it's packed, right? It's Jackson, Mississippi. And they looking at him like, we thought this shit was hype. Because all the, you know, our show got a lot of energy, right? So he was like, yeah, you know, um, this dude, you seen him on, he introducing Jamie now. You seen him on In Living Color. You seen him on whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. He don't give a fuck. Whatever. <laughs> Nigga, Speedy <laughs> says, uh, give it up for Jamie Foxx. Nigga, the music is hype. Jamie runs out on stage with Speedy's bag with the money. <laughs> <laughs> Wrapped around his shoulder. And he hyped. He had the ball and shit. He like, yeah, yeah. Speedy sees the bag and goes, ain't this a bitch. So now, Speedy is chasing Jamie around the stage. <laughs> And Jamie running around the stage, and Speedy said, get my motherfucker back. We're on the side of the stage. We're on the floor laughing at Speedy. <laughs> so he finally gives him the bag. Speedy act like it's Christmas now. <laughs> he was so happy like a little kid. I said, really, nigga? Really? Really? I said, you be, I bet you get rid of some of them little ass bags, won't you? <laughs> and that's the bag story, man. But the entertainment business, Billy likes these stories, man. The entertainment business takes you on a whole lot of journeys, as y'all well know. From, from Juvenile Hall, when we hooked, to Billy Sorrell's and been a lot of nooks and crannies. But the, the movie shit, man, is crazy because directors get, like, directors... They want to, the control factor and the power of directing a film yeah. is amazing. You got all these people working under you, all of these stars. See, people don't realize television is one thing, but the movie business is like the director is God, mm -hmm. in their minds especially. So uh, when you're directing a film, it's not the star of the film. Mm -hmm. They don't even, even in the credits, they talk about, yeah, this guy is starring and that person is starring, this lady is starring. Directed by. That's the power of the, the medium of the film. So we were doing, uh, I got a few director stories, but I'll tell the, the, the great Michael Mann on uh, Miami Vice. Great director, legendary, you know, respected, award winning. And we, do, we had the pleasure of working with this guy. Jamie was starring in Miami Vice with Colin Farrell. 
So we're down in Miami, and it was crazy in Miami at this time. You know, this is the second time we had been down in Miami doing a movie in crazy situations. The first with Oliver Stone, which, you know. Any given Sunday. Sunday. What, what was crazy. I'll tell that story first. So Oliver Stone, let's go to Oliver Stone. We're just talking about Miami. Maybe it's, maybe it's shooting in Miami. So this one scene in particular where Lawrence Taylor played this linebacker in the movie and they're giving a party at Lawrence Taylor's house. It's a big party or whatever. And Johnny Mack is Jamie's friend. He's not an actor really in the movie, but anytime they need an extra, they'll call Johnny Mack. But Johnny Mack has this thing about extras. I don't know if I could say this, but Johnny Mack befriended a lot of the female extras. Let me put it out to you like that. Oh, we oh, got yeah. it. We what answer. is he saying? Be like, Johnny Mack dropped dick in those extras. <laughs> <laughs> he gave somebody over to the extras. Getting somebody clean over there. He's getting them. somebody over there to the extras. His his email is I fucks today. <laughs> That's his email. So <laughs> <laughs> email him. So, wow. So I that, fucks today. So fux <laughs> today. That's for real. So Johnny Mack, we have to keep Johnny Mack off the extras, right? Come on, Johnny Mack with the extras. <laughs> Johnny Mack you know, with the extras. Again, Johnny Mack, he is every day, it's like he's a, a, a lion hunter, and he got a whole flock of lions, but they're from the extra crew. So we're shooting this one scene, and Johnny Mack is a party scene, and Johnny Mack is partying, you know, he's partying and shit. He forgets that we're sh this is a movie. Because he's talking to the extra now. He's, I said, Johnny Mac, Johnny Mac. He said, King, King, no, no. I'm trying to Mac down this extra. You know what I do? I said, Johnny Mac. So the party continues. But they're shooting a scene. As Oliver is panning the camera over through the crowd, it hits Johnny Mac. When the camera hit Johnny Mac, Johnny Mac went. <laughs> Oliver Stone said, cut. <laughs> Jamie, your friend fucked up my shot. <laughs> I said, Johnny Mac, Johnny Mac, Johnny Mac. It's over. It's over. It's over. Johnny, Johnny it's over. He was like, King, King, what did I do? I said, Johnny Mac, you, you, they, you, they're shooting a movie, man. Ah, oh, my bad, man. I almost forgot. I almost <laughs> forgot? No, nigga, you did forget. <laughs> so, so Miami was just a whole thing, man, with that whole testosterone or whatever, how you say it. The weed mm -hmm. is killing me right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, on any given Sunday. And then Miami Vice wasn't too much better because I think the crew really had it there. You know, Michael Mann was like, we had so many inclement weather challenges that that movie that is supposed to take three months to shoot took like six months to shoot. So we in Miami forever because all of the tornado hurricanes that came in and messed up shooting. There was a lot of exterior shots. So this one day, you know, people getting a little frustrated. Michael Mann works a lot of hours. You know, he shoots. He he shoots. Yeah. So uh, it's hour 14 or 15 past the curfew and all this stuff. Everybody's tired. And he looks up. And goes, calls his AD. And it's like, what the fuck is that? And everybody, now every, when Michael looks up, everybody and they, looking everybody's up. looking up. So I look up. I'm going, what the fuck are they looking at? He said, what the fuck is that in my shot? Uh, it's a cloud, Michael. Get that fucking cloud out of my shot. <laughs> Get it out of my shot. Now, I said, okay. He's the director. He's the powerful and all this. I said, okay, I, I get his, his angst around it. But what really fucked me up is when the AD said, right away, Michael. <laughs> I said, what in the fuck are these hunkies on? <laughs> these right hunkies away, on. Right. I'm like, Shit, if he moved his cloud out of here, <laughs> I'm done. Right but, away, Michael. But we had a lot of fun. Dude, you, you don't stay up there long with drugs involved. Somebody got some, it's some cocaine on the movie set. Yeah, that's that. Hey, There's a lot of cloud on the movie set. I know you don't do yeah, all that shit. No, but that I know when he said get the cloud shot. out, that's a yeah, it was some drugs. That, that's, <laughs> right. that's when you come out confident as hell. Get the cloud, get oh God's God. work. <laughs> out of my shot. Out of my shot. That's the thing about cocaine, it make you arrogant. It make you so damn arrogant and, and and precise about what you want and yeah. the bullshit you asking for. Yeah. Lit up. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Get the fucking cloud out of here. Get the cloud out of here. 
No joke. Right away. AD on it too. <laughs> but, on it. But who was on it more? Him or the dude that said he was going to get it out of the shot? Nigga. <laughs> So. He on drugs too. Yeah, <laughs> they both, they both we can get it out of here. So, yeah. Yeah. Change the precipitation pattern and just move it. AD no, just agree. Just agree. Just agree. Just agree. Just agree. That's what it is. It, yeah. it, it may not happen. A motherfucker, he just do what he has. Sober as shit. He and he know he compensated for a director that's on drugs. Because when hey. you say okay, which all right. Yeah, I was like, this is amazing. This is some real Hollywood shit. Get that cloud out of my. Get shot. that cloud out of my. Yeah, shot. man. Right so, away. Thank you guys, man. This shit is great, man. We got the Richard Pryor, you know, oh, Eddie Rich. Murphy. Yeah, Rich is Rich is one of my, you know, you get the pleasure of working, especially in the comedy business, man. For for black people to work with Richard Pryor, for me to get that opportunity to um, have Mark Curry at the time on Richard Pryor's last tour, work with Richard, that was amazing. Just you know, it was cool as hell. And then to um, to you know, for white people, you got to check them sometime and say, hey, well, I work with Bob Hope. Because that's their Jesus. So yeah. for yeah. us, it's Richard Pryor. For them, it's Bob Hope. Yeah. So any meeting I go into, I always like to talk with talk about Bob Hope because that's who you're meeting with. But for Richard Pryor, man, that was so amazing to see that dude still want to go up and still have some faculties left. They would put all of his his material on the monitor so he could sit and read it and kind of go through it. But uh, just to see people come out, that's what I was amazed by. To see people come out to see, kind of, they knew it was his last. He was sick and he was, you know, he couldn't stand or whatever. But to see, to do three or four shows with him and watch him work and watch him know his legacy and know what he's meant to us culturally, you know, that's on, you know, you can't replace that experience, you know, and just see it. And then the last time I think I saw Richard, not that you guys asked me about Richard, but the last time I saw, uh, and this is a lesson for young comedians, I think. Um, his ex-wife, um, and I'm not vilifying her, but his ex-wife um, was taking him around the comedy clubs. So he was at the Laugh Factory, and uh, I saw her, and uh, she was, you know, taking care of him and his, you know, his business estates or whatever, and and him physically. And I saw her, and I said, "Hey, you know, how you doing? Whatever." She said, "Oh, did Richard see you?" And I'll. I was like, no, Richard is in a chair. He can't move. He's drooling. His eye, he can only move his eyes. Did Richard, and she was like, Richard was cool. Oh, did Richard see you? I was like, no, I don't think so. You should come. He wants to see you. Come say hi to Richard. Now, Richard probably don't know me like that. Yeah. We just did some dates with him, but he was like, hey, Marcus, I've been looking for you. Not at all. But... He sit, she's sitting there, so only you have to, you have to. So I go over there, and he's out of it. You know, he's gone. And he's, you know, he can't probably control his faculties or whatever. And I, see, I just remember his eyes looking up at me and going, motherfucker, if you don't get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew it, and I knew it was wrong. You know, and I didn't want to put him in that position to do that, but... You got to be careful about the people you put around you now because you don't know who's going to be taking care of you later. Wow. Mm. And however you did them, because I asked um, an old handler of Richards, I said, why would she do that? Why would she have him and parade him around? Well, you should see the way he treated her, Mr. <laughs> King. This is payback. Mm. So, hey, man. Hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Richard, but it was great, man. Still Richard Pryor. Yeah. Still, Richard, Still Richard Pryor. Pryor. Man, that's, yeah, that's awesome. You yeah. know, you get to work with people like that. That's when you experience it. You know, when I first came out here to LA, you know, getting to have a chance to have a show on on Fox All on Sirius, and uh, you know, getting to work with Fox and you, and just being in that whole energy and environment, it was like, all right, nigga, this is it. So. They take me out on the road, finally. Guy Black comes to me. He's so, mad at me. Hold on. He mad. Who, Guy Black? Oh, he get over it. Guy Black's good. And that's good. all I was going to say. Yeah. Keep going. Okay, you know, Guy Black is a very important person because he was mentioned in the very first episode of Did You Miss Me. Uh, when we first see him, the demo of the show, the deck, he listened to the story. Oh, you talking about me in the goddamn show? <laughs> <laughs> Hot. Ain't listened to another episode after that. I want to hear it. He's just talking about people. But, <laughs> So the, for this moment that he has not been mentioned on the show again, he was hot. 
You, you can't just be going out here making fun of me, Billy. It's my uncle. <laughs> and I told y'all he's been in my life forever. Mm-hmm. So he comes and tells me that y'all done came up with bringing me out. We going to uh, Atlantic City. Foxhole Live, live broadcast, all that shit. I'm hyped. We got a party. Now, I'm super stoked and excited. I do not want to fuck this up. So God Black was like, hey man, don't be out here fucking up on the road, man. You gotta be ready. I was like, man, I'm ready. So now he asked me about all my jokes and shit all the time, trying to just keep asking me about my material. Like, right. I'm gonna forget the shit. Right. Been only been saying the shit this for eight years. Steady fucking with me. Get to the hotel. That's a casino. And guess my credit card. Yeah, the room hold charge is 250 Oh, you're a young comic. Hey. Ah, you're not ready for that charge. I got 125 You are not ready for that charge. <laughs> so, I just keep swiping. Swipe the card. There's supposed to be something going on with the car. You know my thing. No one thing. Keep, man, keep don't talking. Don't that goddamn car. Keep, keep talking, talking, man. You listen, just got to keep talking. Listen, everybody's coming over. This the char- this charge ain't keep going to. Everybody coming to. Five keep going. What's up, man? You good? Yeah, man. So swipe it. Yeah, swipe it again. Yeah, man. So you up here, man. You know I got that. New don't car. even look at that. <laughs> keep talking. Yeah, keep talking. So, man, you ready for the show? The sound yeah. check. I'm going to be in there. Sound check. I'm going to see you. Speedy walk through. Bill. I'm gonna, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir, your car is... Uh, your ah, car keep on running again. Yeah. Keep hey, talking. Hey, so, man, well, listen, what time do you oh. press later on? Are we doing press? Okay, then. Now, what do I tell about my comps for the after party? Okay, just tell you. <laughs> all right, so your car, you understand? So, it's a keep limo talking. picking us up. Run it again. I kept on with it. People coming up, other guests. I'm not leaving. I'm standing no. right there. And you and you poised. Yeah, I poised. Stay poised. This has got to be the ninth time she swiped my car right there. <laughs> I'm, what I'm trying to do is... I'm trying to exhaust her from wanting to do this transaction. Billy, <laughs> how many times has she swiped? Nine. <laughs> I greeted everybody on the tour. <laughs> Claudia George, this nigga walked by. They think I'm just up there checking in. I'm wearing ah, this clerk out hey, this man. front desk. Nine swipes. She Nothing. asked it. Sir, well, it's two twenty-five. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I know I ain't but a hundred dollars. Oh my god. You already car. know what's on that card. Hundred to hundred and thirteen. It ain't going through. That's it. But guess what you're gonna do? Keep swiping. 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 swiping it. Keep swiping it. So I'm trying to exhaust this woman from wanting to do this. Guy Black comes back downstairs. He's coming down the escalator. Hey man, uh, we need to go and get over there. I was like, all right, yeah, we, I'm gonna get over there in a minute. Hey, man, no, no, we need to go right now, man. What you doing? Man, what's the problem? Well, his, well, his car is not going to. Oh, sh- come on, Billy. You gotta come, on, on, Billy. <laughs> come on, Billy. <laughs> come on, Billy. So the way he said, come on, Billy, was like, nigga, I, you supposed to have these type of things worked out. I said, well, this shit, nigga, give me your car, nigga. Oh, shit. God bless. Oh, man, come on, we ain't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> we got time for that. <laughs> and I was like, God black shit. don't want no problems. Listen, man. So, in my brain, I know I just need to leave. I'm going to leave. I'm going to go do what we got to do. My bag's right here. Throw them on, the, on there. Go do the show. Come back. I got a room. They're going to give me this room for the night over with. You got to get My it name is on there. Somebody going to give me a key. And I got I got a way to, to get it in my brain. Right. right. I already thought around it. Mm-hmm. So, boom. I go to the party, have a good time, late. Come back, it's about 2.30. I come back to the hotel, I got my bags with me. I said, fuck it, I'm going to get in this room by any means. I know it's only 1.13 on this car. This is a casino. Walk up to the counter, different person. I say, hey, swipe my card. I don't know, something's happening earlier. I just need to go ahead and get in my room. Oh, okay. Oh. No, it's not working. Let's run it again. Run that. Problem is, ain't nobody else around to run nothing off of. Okay, you can't talk to nobody. Can't talk to nobody. Shit. So little cleaning lady walk by. Get her. Do. Get her. I say, hey man, hey, hey man. You know what? I appreciate what you did yesterday. So they walking up there. <laughs> <laughs> she looking at me. <laughs> now they don't speak no English because they looking like. Ah. I said, I appreciate what you did for my mama. Cause that man, you know, you know what's going on with her. I said, man, you know, God gonna bless you for that, man. God gonna really bless you for that. Man, keep talking. Keep talking. So the man at the counter was like, "What's what? What are you talking about? Well, why why are you checking back in if you were here last night?" Yeah, man, you know, uh, the amputation didn't go the way that we wanted it to. They said they was gonna cut at the knee. They came up to the thigh. 
<sighs> now, my mama got all these long pants that I got to go get clipped back. <laughs> Keep talking. To wrap up the amputation. That's horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. Why'd you have the surgery done out here in Atlanta City? I said, yeah, well, what happened was when she got her foot stuck in that conveyor belt at the grocery store. <laughs> mm, get in there. Hey, man, look, I kept talking. talking. I was not going to stop. So what, well, what's happening with your room? I said, well, I had to go and go pawn some stuff so I could put some money in my account mm. to try and get this credit over here because I got to take her to an outpatient thing tomorrow. So I'm just gonna keep talking. And right. That's what I'm doing. That's so it. he's looking at me and he ride with me on the whole story. Come on, keep riding. I'm working him. Work the shit I'm out of him. Working his ass. He finally says, "Listen, man, I, I we've run it at least six times. We, I mean, we're just not gonna keep running it. I, I want to help you. Um, there's a liquor cabinet upstairs in your room. I, if you go up there and give me that key and bring it back down, that way you don't have access to the liquor cabinet." <laughs> I, I should be able to do it and get the, the hold and bring it down just so you can check in mm -hmm. for incidentals. So I do it. I get the key. I come back down and give it to him. I'm walking him to the desk. The guy at the front desk is telling the manager. The manager is in disbelief of the story mm -hmm. about me. Yeah, well, the guy, his mom is a double amputee. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, like, you know, asking, well, how is she getting back and that back forth? And so I'm asking, I was like, oh, yeah, well, we, you know, I'm just leaving her up there because there's no sense in bringing her back and down. So yeah, she's up there. In the casino, she can't even see a game. You want somebody to get a chair or Come something? Come on, man. It's not good. I'm, I'm, I'm milking Keep it. Talking. I was like, you know, she, she's having trouble eating, so she may not even want to come out tomorrow. She just likes to see the chips when I come back to the room and if that's I it. want something or not. My women. And that's it. And, uh, you know, that's just, that's just what it is for me. I'm helping her live. And so the man is, is open. Like, like, you can see his soul. I mean, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you guys two breakfast coupons in the morning and go down to the buffet on this, okay? And, and, and I was like, well, you know, she may not make it to the buffet. She so can't make it. Now just, if she does, she does, she doesn't, she doesn't. It's cool. We'll roll it over to the next day. Gives me that. I said, so um, maybe we can get like $20 or $30 comp for you guys to go play. I mean, most people lose the money, and it's coming right back to us anyway, so we're not, we're not losing anything. Uh, we can do that. Cool. What, what's her mom's name? I'm starting to tell him about my mom. Guy Black comes around the corner. He stands right over my shoulder. I'm still running the story. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, they took the legs off. So got black kids. Oh man, come on! They cut the legs off. I just talked to your mama. I just talked to her. Come on, Billy. What did they, she up here now? So now it's a scene. They cut the legs off. So I just, I just talked to him. So he freaking out. He called my daddy. Hey, hey. Hey, they cut her legs off? <laughs> my daddy on the phone me. Hey, man, I don't know what you're doing, man. You need to cut that bullshit out, man. You need to cut that bullshit out. Cut that bullshit. I don't know what you're doing. Cut that, that bullshit. All that lying you're doing. But you got to stop all that lying, man. Got this man worried. Who legs got cut off? So I hang on the phone. And so this is all going on. And God Black's talking to me the whole time. You can't be saying stuff like this, man. People do stuff like that. Kind of all right. So the manager's coming over. He's like, what, what do you mean? Like, you know, I don't know. He's a comedian. And he's from. I'm looking at guy black. I'm like, nigga, easy. Go. <laughs> so, and nothing else that I can do. They're talking. I gotta break this up some kind of way. I haul off and I push guy black. I said, man, going on, man. You need to stop bringing that shit up to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> The dude in the back is like, wait, what's going on? I said, no, man, you taking them drugs to a room. I told you. That ain't going to be one. Throwing guy black no. clean under the bus. <laughs> so now the nigga behind the counter, the manager's like, oh, man, he's got drugs on him. I don't know. But he could. So I'm trying to, I got to get this person by the counter on my side. This guy black ain't with the shit. He trying to tell me I need to cut this shit out. Right. So I'm like, no, nah, man, you tripping. You need going on with all them drugs and shit. My mama trying to get her life together. That's how she got her foot stuck in the conveyor belt anyway. So the guy's talking about, come on. You the reason? And I, I'm, I'm trying to get out of there. Yeah, I man. say, got black. Leave. I give him that one. He was like, all right. The guy's talking, trying to talk to God black. God black's walking off. I go, 
go up to the escalator. Hit the elevator. Go up to my room. Sitting there. Fall asleep. Knock, knock, knock at the door. Look out in the hallway. I don't see nobody. I don't see nobody. Fuck it. Knock, knock, knock. Open oh, people. Look out. Don't see nobody. But I hear some murmuring. Open the door. It's got black. Got black short. You can't see him. In the <laughs> <That's what> I- <laughs> <laughs> Open the door. He said, Billy, man, you know, it's been a good night. Did a good job tonight. I want you to meet somebody. In the door, he walks in the manager. He said he wanted to come up here to see your mama. I looked him dead in the eye and I said, Did you miss me? God damn. <laughs> Took, Took you around, around the world. world. And dropped your off. ass off. Hey, man, this is Did You Miss Me? I'm d I'm Billy Surreals. It's been a great episode, man. Thank you all for watching. Thanks, Marcus. Marcus, thank you, man, for some great stories, bro. Gosh. Can I tell one more story? You can, you Patreon. I got to do this.